Medallion thought it was on top of the world back in 2011, and then something came along that no one expected in form of in the form of a tech innovation. And this is going to keep happening more and more as the pace of um, the tech technology industry accelerates. Um, so this is some this is a reality that could happen to any company, but there are some things that you as an investor can do to help insulate yourself from these kinds of risks. And I know we harp on this a lot on this podcast, but diversity is critical to every portfolio, both having a wide variety of companies as well as having companies that offer a wide variety of products. So even if one business segment bites the dust, they still have other ways of keeping themselves going. Yeah, and, and that's a criti- really, really critical thing because you have to match up what Gabby's saying about, you know, there are these industries, and you could think that an industry is, is completely protected from competitors because there's nobody else there, there's nobody else providing those services, but then some sort of technological innovation will come along and completely decimate or completely disrupt an industry. B- back when, in the early 1900s, right, when you had cars come out, for the longest time, nobody thought that automobiles were going to be, they thought it was just going to be a kind of a niche hobby market, but then it came out and totally disrupted, right, your horse and buggy market, and and it was just completely unseen. So it's important for investors, the one way to protect yourself from this, because you can invest in a good company for 30 years, and and, and it could be a good decision, and they could get disrupted in 15 years, the best way to protect yourself is just diversifying, and you can do that by either buying just a bunch of individual stocks, or Probably the easiest way and, and probably the most sure way to diversify your portfolio adequately is just to buy an exchange trade of fund that invests in, say, the S&P 500. Absolutely. Um, and then, like I was saying about companies that have diverse business lines, um, you have, say, for example, GE, right? They have uh, energy, aviation, healthcare, transportation. Um, they even had GE Financial for a while, which they're spinning off and selling off to, to different people. But they basically ran a bank. I don't think a lot of people knew that GE essentially had a bank within itself for a really long time. Um, it wasn't doing great, so now they're selling it off. But it's, And it was a huge bank. It's a huge I, bank. I mean, it, I think I, I think in asset sizes, and I think they've run off some of their assets, and this has since been sold off. And I, th- I think uh, it, it operates under the name Ally Bank now, right? Is that... Is that that used to be G's, if I'm correct? I mean, it's a huge bank. I think it's a top ten. Oh yeah, absolutely. But like when people think GE, they don't think about that. They think about like washing machines. They definitely don't think about them making airplane stuff either. You know, but they they have a lot of different things. Another one is like a Procter and Gamble or a Johnson and Johnson. They just have so many different business lines that people don't even think about. Johnson and Johnson, for example, makes surgical instruments. A lot of people have no idea. They just think of them in terms of band aids. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, you're looking at Procter and Gamble, or Johnson. I mean, these are, these are these are your 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 definitional companies that have internally diversified their product lines. And so, if you're looking at a company that's focusing exclusively on medallions or or, or over focusing on them, you really can see the impact of not diversifying because of uh, what that will do to your revenue stream, or as opposed to your companies that Gabby was just talking about. You know, you could have one business go down, other businesses will pick up the slack. Absolutely. And the other thing that you want to look at, and something that all these really big businesses have done, is that they have weathered adverse business cycles where innovation or bad market conditions could have killed them, but they didn't. Um, So that means you're going to be looking for companies that are highly adaptive and able to pivot to meet new challenges or environments. Um, The the business that comes to mind for me, because we do financials, is actually community bank systems. Um, They're a small bank system that's up in New York, um, and they actually thrived during the financial crisis because what they did was a lot of the bigger banks, they pulled out of the really small towns there because it was hard for them to be profitable there, and community bank system just swept up, scooped up all those little banks, all those little small towns because those people still had to bank, and there was no one to fill that void. And now bigger banks are having a hard time moving back into those small towns because everyone is with community bank systems. Pretty smart. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, you know, Gabby, I have now I've not looked into that company. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Oh yeah, absolutely. We can talk about it one day. It'll be pretty exciting.